Yeah. Copper cartridge insert, 491 insulate. Take one. Is that all right? Beauty, Tom, beauty. Okay, good. Tom, good. Look good. That's it, huh? Okay. Bye, fellas. Thank you very much. Bye. Sometimes. Janice needs an hour, so I thought we might go over to the polo lounge for drinks after the taping. Fine. You getting a woman's point of view on me? Is there a woman's point of view on you? I don't know. I guess I'll just have to wait and find out. Did you tell her I wouldn't talk? I about told her, Tom. I told her. Each of us is made in the image and likeness of God. This divine presence in everything human is what gives us our infinite dignity. It enables us to reach out in love to our brother human beings. But there's also a demonic dimension in everything human, the shadow side of ourselves, angry, destructive, hate-filled, the root cause of the inner violence that pits us against ourselves and against our fellow human beings. Most of us don't like to think about this wound within ourselves. It is a little hard on our egos. And so we're tempted to suppress all consciousness of it. Other people, yes, but not me. I'm perfect. No hate, no violence in me. This is a mistake. For the demonic can be controlled only when it's confronted. This wound within ourselves can be healed only when it's brought out into the full light of consciousness. Just sign right there, please. What is this? Just an after. Oh, well, I'd like to pull up some okay. organic. Organic. That's yeah. kind of a kick time. Oh, it's a okay, big and right there. <laughs> oh, and uh, right down here at the bottom. What, real raw sugar? No, no. Um, could you possibly just sign an autograph for my sister, please? Right here. <laughs> Hey, really? Thank you. Wow. Here. Oh, thank you. You nervous? No, I just. Uh... Today the twenty seventh. Yeah. I'm serious about not talking about Julie. Make sure she understands. She understands, that. Tom. She does. You seem a little, uh, distracted. Oh, I'm fine. New car all right? Mm-hmm. Got the new drapes in the apartment all right? Yeah, yesterday. Is it because... Two minutes. Okay, thank you. Is it this thing with Julie? Is that it? No, it is not this thing with Julie. She's cooperating with the lawyers? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not involved in that. What happened? Where's, where's the coffee? Try and relax, Tom. I am relaxed. Everything's gonna work out. I'm gonna call Herb and find out if she's cooperating with Look, you know she's not cooperating. You know she's trying to squeeze me for everything she... Did she have to come along? No, but I thought it would be good if she could see you. You want her to leave? No. Hi, here's your coffee. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> what is that? It'll relax you. Come on, Steve. Mr. Slade, come keep it. I 
Now, listen, Janice, I forgot to mention something uh, in your interview with him later. I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't mention his divorce. He's a sensitive guy, and he feels... My next guest has been a window washer, a ranch hand, a real estate salesman, a bartender, and I don't know what else. But right now, of course, he's best known for his work in films. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Tom Slade right now. <laughs> Tom, it's, uh, it's nice to have you back. Thank you, it's good to be here. How you been? Fine, just fine, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way, isn't it? Hey, tell me, you, um, someone told me you just finished another movie. That's right, I just finished a film in Mexico with Ed Kingsley and John Rogers. Oh, he's a marvelous man, isn't he? Yes, John is a wonderful man to work with. I was I'm... thinking of Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, well, uh, anyway, it's called uh, The Last Robbery, and in it I play a killer. A killer? Well, that isn't very unusual for you. You've played a lot of killers before, haven't you? That's right, several times before. I'm beginning to wonder if it's typecasting. <laughs> you know, I really do wonder about that, though. You know how easy it is in this town to become pegged as a cowboy actor, a comedy actor, and then and it becomes impossible to break out of it. Yeah, I've heard that. Actually, what I would like to do is a comedy. A comedy? Yes, you I would. A comedy? Yeah, I don't think it'll ever happen, though. Well, you can't tell. When you're a talent, you could pull it off if anybody could. But tell us about The Last Robbery. Well, I play a hired killer, and I, I kill nine men and a girl. A girl? You shoot a girl? I almost shoot two of them. I play a very bad man. Sounds hideous. Um, is, uh, is, is that a problem now, uh, Tom? Uh, drinking? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Uh, I mean, violence in the movies. You hear a lot of discussion about that. Well, you know, I don't take it very seriously, Joe. It's, uh, I don't think the, uh, I don't think an intelligent audience takes it seriously either. Uh, well, what about the people that say violence in the movies makes people violent by example? Well, I have a different theory about that. I think that, uh, make-believe violence tends to release real tensions in an audience so that they're actually less violent in their lives. I know it releases tension in me. Does it? Mm-hmm. Well, then you like to be the bad guy, don't you? Oh, I love it. I really enjoy it. Yeah, you bet he does. Well, that, uh, that surprises me, Tom, because in, in real life, you're such a mild-mannered fella, and I know something about your private life. I know... Now, backstage, before the show, you were telling me about your work with the crippled children? Yes, that's right. I'm the, uh, I'm the national celebrity chairman for the Crippled Children's Foundation here in California. And, uh... <laughs> uh, we do a lot of fundraising work for the crippled children's homes here in Southern California. Well, uh, that doesn't sound very villainous, does it? Well, obviously, you just don't know him. Well, I'm trying to get to. <laughs> we'll be right back with actor Tom Slade after this message. He seems very relaxed. That broad's getting under his skin. She's a friend of Julie's. Julie. His wife. I wish he'd just... Just what? He's a sensitive guy, is all. He's sensitive. Time now. Uh, 15 seconds. <laughs> about getting into a roll and then we'll go to the film clips. Okay, sir. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Tom, tell me, how do you prepare for a role as a villain? I know we had Chuck Heston on here just a short while ago and he was telling us how he got ready to play the role of... Uh, Moses, and then later on, 
Michelangelo, but how do you, Tom Slade, get ready to play the role of a killer? Well, I don't have any tricks. I just study the script and uh, try to find the character. You know, I, I, I try to find out what it is that will allow someone to kill or what drives him to kill. Um, you know, what it is in someone's background that makes him a lawless man. Um, well, what is it that you find, I mean, in yourself that would help you to act the role oh, of a killer? Um, I don't know, uh, different things. Uh, what kind of things? I mean, army experience, something like that in yourself? N well, no, not that, not that oh. specifically. I... Well, for crying out loud, just tell us. Well, it's not the same way that you get into a role. Uh, but uh, seriously, folks, um, uh, Tom, uh, I would, uh, Tom, uh, sure. I'd, I'd uh, like to pursue this violence thing. I think we may have something going here. I'm interested. What is it that makes people violent? What, what is it that makes them do violent things and harm other people? What is it that's in them? Well, I don't, I, I don't know why you're asking me. I'm not really an expert. I'm just an actor. Rage. I beg your pardon? Rage. People kill through rage, and people do violence through rage. There's nothing mysterious about that. Well, I don't think it's that simple. No, I'm not so sure it's that simple either, Doctor. No, no, no. It's, it's rage, all right. You see, anger is an emotion people are reluctant to express, and being afraid to express that they try to hide it. They even try to deny that it's there. Well, everybody gets mad from time to time, but not everybody kills, do they? Oh, I'm not talking about getting mad from time to time. I'm talking about a deep, inner, constant rage. Well, would that be a result of something that happened to you in your childhood, something like that, Jimmy? Usually, yes. Yeah, some aspect of the childhood environment may lead to an insecurity and inferiority where there would be a, a need for uh, acceptance and love and a feeling that that love isn't being given, that the world is unresponsive and disinterested. That would lead to a feeling of personal worthlessness, which is intolerable. And then a feeling of just dis disappointment, which produces rage. Yeah, and violent people are just uh, disappointed. Well, you might say disappointed and frustrated, and that is particularly acute after the assumption of a role that is specifically designed to reduce, reduce frustration now and rage, you see. And when that role is rejected... Now, wait a minute. Uh, then. How can, how can you say that I'm that way? I, mean, I didn't say anything about you, Mr. Slade. But you just said that I accept, ro uh, I accept roles to reduce frustration and that I... Uh... I beg your pardon. I said nothing of the kind. I was talking about philosophical roles, not <laughs> He's acting. quick on the trigger. <laughs> but he's a little slow up here. <laughs> Nobody's as quick as you are, sweetheart. <laughs> Do you do many of these shows? Do I do? Well, it's uh, funny you should ask that. I'm beginning to get the feeling I've done too many. I know just how you feel. <laughs> we'll be right back with Barbara Ash, Dr. Arthur Rendell, actor Tom Slade, right after this message. Or anything? No, thanks. I'm fine. This is eating him up. He's sensitive. It's wrong to think he isn't. Tom, well, we're going to get off of this violence thing and then uh, we're going to go right to the, the love scene. Is that all right for you? Okay, fine. I think that'll work better. Ten seconds. <laughs> Five, four, three. Welcome back to the show, and actor Tom Slade, our guest tonight. Tom, you're famous for your roles as a villain, of course. We've discussed that, but in, in the last few years, you've become just as famous for your roles as a romantic leading man. Well, you know, actually, I never really think of myself as a leading man. I just um, accept whatever roles I can get. Is that the way it happens? <laughs> no matter how it happens, the fact is you have played opposite some of the most glamorous ladies of the screen. We've got some clips from those movies with us tonight. We're going to show them. Would you roll them, please? He didn't. He did. Why couldn't you have told me before? You know why. 
out. Hear what I say. This is very nice. Well, I've made a start. I've missed you, Patty. I've missed you a lot. Please leave. I think you missed me too. I mean it. Then please leave. I want you back. He and I have a score to settle. Well, what are you going to do? Settle it one way or another. And me? We have a score to settle, too. Those were love scenes? Oh, they sure were, Doctor. That was Tom Slade getting it all together. Well, they didn't look like love scenes to me. All I could see was brutality and rage. You seem to see a lot of rage in everything you look at. Well, there's a lot of it in the world. Well, that's no reason. That's an interesting point, Doctor, you know, because they say that the movies reflect reality, that they hold a mirror up to society. I must disagree with you there. With a few exceptions, most movies are myths. They show our goals, our beliefs, and how things ought to be, but the people are always beautiful, and situations are always dramatic. And life just isn't like that. So movies don't reflect reality. They reflect our hopes. No, I'm not so sure. I want to know what they, point yeah. the doctor is making. What is your point, doctor? Loveless violence. People who portray roles which are loveless and violent. I'm an actor. Are... I'm aware of that. He's aware of that. Why don't you go lie down? <clears throat> Why don't you slap me around first? Slap, slap, slap! What the hell's the matter with you? Barbara, please. We're just here to have a little fun. <laughs> She's only kidding, Tommy. What are you saying, Doctor? Uh, well, well, Mr. Slade had already said there are elements within himself which he draws from in order to create a character. I'm an actor. I act. Well, I'm what you saw up there is a performance. Yes, I agree with that, unquestionably. Not unquestionably, point. that's it, that's all there is. It's an act. Just what's up there, there's nothing more. Uh, now, uh, look, you, uh, you and I seem to be talking at cross purposes. No, we're not. What you just saw on that screen is purely and simply an act. Huh. Is it time for a station break or commercial or anything? I'm gonna pray for a commercial. I've never done this before. <coughs> um, um, I don't know why you people are attacking me. I mean, who are you anyway? I don't know what gives you the right to even mention anything about me. I'm, there's nothing wrong with me. I try to get it through your heads that I'm an actor. I'm, I'm not those people that you saw up there on the screen. I'm me. We are what we pretend to be. We are what we are, and what I am is an actor. That's how I make my living. I'd be interested to know how the two of you make yours. Well, I know how Lady Lush here does, but what about you? What do you do? Teach a few classes, try to jump on a couple of co-eds and hope your wife doesn't find out? Your wife found out, and that's your problem. My problem is that my wife is too fond of strange men. Now, I'll bet that's something you know a lot about, sweetheart. Has anybody read any good books lately? <laughs> well, what about the good doctor here? I really would be interested in knowing what else he does besides character assassinations. The doctor has a very smug look on his face. Very smug. He knows a lot, the doctor. Well, I'd like to know just what the hell he does know about anything. Uh, music, now, why don't you just shut up, you person of a little creep?
You may not believe this, but we'll be right back. <laughs> Take it easy, kid. Everything's gonna be fine. You just gotta cool down. Take it easy, all right? Twenty million people. I said what I meant. You said a little more than you meant. I don't know how Julie stood him. That's him, boy. That is the way he really is. That guy is a killer. Have you got a match? Sorry, I don't smoke. No. Oh. Match! Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Welcome back with my guests, or, uh, uh, my guest, rather, uh, Dr. Arthur Randell. Why don't you sit over here, doctor? It must be lonely over there. Well, Doctor, after tonight, I imagine it'll seem quite calm down at the nut house, won't it? <laughs> I think it will, yeah. Or the clinic, Still, or whatever you call it. Well, I, I'm very sorry if I said Oh, no, anything. it's nothing that, that you did. It's just... I want to apologize to you, Joe, for what I said, and uh, I want to apologize to the doctor here. I, uh... It's, uh, not necessary. I want to, I... You see, it's like this, uh... I came on this show to plug a lousy movie. Uh, maybe it's a good movie, I don't know, I haven't seen it. But uh, I came on this show and uh, I've been on all the other shows because uh, I'm expected to do that. Uh, people expect me to. I mean, uh, the producer, my manager, my agent, the studio, they, they expect it and I, uh, I try to make them happy. I, I've uh, been trying to make people happy all my life. Everybody, my mother, my father, my school teachers, my football coach, everybody. I, I wanted them all to like me. Um, and I'm always afraid that they won't. I. Uh, I work hard, and uh, I'm always on time. I always know my lines. Uh, um, I got very rich a while ago. Well, pretty rich, and I, uh, I bought this Rolls-Royce convertible for $35,000, and sold it two days later just for the hell of it. Just, I know that, just the hell of it, I mean. And um, after that, I, I saw this psychiatrist and he told me that I was behaving like a child and that I had to stop it, so. He was, he was driving me out of my mind, so I just stopped going. But besides, I was too busy. I'm very busy all the time. Uh, I keep making demands on me all the time. Uh, I know the, the roles are violent, but uh, that's not me. I mean, I don't... Uh, I mean, they like it. People like me in those roles. They come and they pay money and uh, they like it. So I do it. And uh, they like it. But you see then, there's always somebody who uh, 
says it isn't good. It's never enough what I do, so... Uh, that's why I do these roles. It feels good. It feels good to get mad, and I, I like it. Um, see, I, look, I can't help it if you don't like what I do. I want to be me the way I am, but uh, people don't like that, so I, I do something else. I, I act the way I do. Uh, You see, you have to understand that I'm, I'm trapped here. This is a prison. I'm, uh, I have to be a certain way. Because if I'm not, nobody will like me. And, uh, I'm just a human being. I, I, I want to, I want to be liked. And that's it. That. It's beautiful. They loved it. Yeah, I know. Get the broad and let's do the interview. I want to go home. I, I told her about the divorce. She won't ask. That's okay. She can ask. I don't care. No, no. I, I told her it was off limits. Let's just get it over with. I, I tell you, she won't ask. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church.